I would love to greet everyone in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus the Christ who saved my soul in 1984 11th February I am a brother to Bishop P.V. Ntlebende. To me, he has been more than a brother. He was my best friend. He was a man of faith, man of wisdom, and a man of power. I'm proud to reiterate the, the words of Jesus Christ. Referring to myself saying no gates of hell will stand before me. Because of the faith this man taught us. He had what I call the aggressive faith. There are seven outstanding things about Bishop P. Vintabende. So many outstanding things, but I will just touch seven things in five minutes. Number one, our mother tells us he was born during harvest time in a mealy's field. No doctor helped my mother. There were, there were no other ladies helping my mother. My mother had to help herself. But the boy was born healthy. And I believe that birth was a prophetic birth. As Jesus Christ said to us, the field is huge. But laborers are few. He was born for a harvest. Not for crops this time, but a harvest for souls. He received Jesus Christ as his personal savior in 1976. But before that, he was a leader in one of the, what they call, gangsters. The way you saw him being aggressive as he was, as he was preaching the gospel, it was the attitude he had before he got saved. It is just that Jesus Christ, I, I mean, God took that attitude and used it for his kingdom. He was just like that. Many abandoned him because they thought he was not born again. He was because when God saves you, He saves you for what you are. To connect you with who you are. He preached the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. And I must emphasize that because many thought he was using some other powers, but we people who grew up with him, people who were there, we know that was God's genuine power. He was in the full gospel church of God. Because this man would not preach for people to go to heaven only, but he was also confronting the apartheid system. The church didn't love that. He didn't resign from the full gospel church, but he was expelled. Because they would not accept his theology preaching against the present system, which was, which was the system of the oppressor, apartheid system. This thing of challenging the government did not start today. 
but it started even before he got into ministry full time. He did that even before he went to college, 1985. The first thing is his miraculous birth. The second thing was the birth of his ministry. He was expelled from the full gospel church because he would preach people for eternal life and at the same time he would preach against the government. This is where his ministry was born. And during those days no black African would establish a ministry without affiliating to one of the churches that are registered already and it was supposed to be churches that were established by whites. I remember when he was expelled from the full gospel church, he tried to join the faith mission church, but they would not receive him because they said he's a communist. Life has never been easy for my brother. Never. I've never found him happy. He was only happy when we were talking together. But if he was happy, it would be 0.1% in a day. He was always hurting, always crying, always planning, always thinking. That's one thing he would not abandon. And that was faith in God. He started a ministry and he was helped by this apostle who is late now, Apostle Tumbisa from the Siskai, by the help of Sebe. Back then, Sebe advised them what to do for their ministries to be registered. And they took his advice and he registered a ministry. And the Lord told him, you must give this name and you must live by that name. Faith gospel. Good news. Preached from the word. Because faith comes by hearing nothing except the word. William Tutan Tailingwe Manganga Nkani was a Hatalileto, a fellow Mudima Emelin. In those days, because we were confused, we did not have a spiritual father, a spiritual mother, or a spiritual brother, or a spiritual whatsoever. Spiritual uncle, spiritual nephew. We didn't have those things. We had pinpointed to three people and we decided to emulate after those people. The likes of Nizela, Ralhulela, and Kabi. We would buy their cassette. And we would listen to their preachings and imitate them and preach the message exactly the way it's recorded in the cassette. But the unfortunate part, trying to come closer to them, was not easy. Because in those days, if you were young and they don't know you, they would make sure that you know that you are young, you are immature, and you are not called until they approve you. I'm very sorry. If Ngakena was saying that in Tababa, it's a Baba and Bata Utabu Shokumu. I remember in some of the tents, sometimes he let in the young way, or tell this evangelist, Unaduzi Fats, a bishop, or Lemoruti Mafungu, and he said, My brother, my brother, come here. And Bishop thought he's calling him, only to find that he was calling Mafungu. He stood up about Bafasi Wena, Shima. And he sat down. He looked at me. And he said to me, what have I done to this? Pictures 
this great evangelist. What have I done? Can't say. Because I was immature, I couldn't answer. I'm trying to say he was treated badly by politicians, by pastors who were matured back then, people who were looking up to, they were treating him very bad. That's one person who never treated Bishop like a trash, and that is Tsukudu, the late Tsukudu. The rest, you are shocked when you hear them saying Bishop P. Vintlebende was my friend. It is not true. I'm asking the church of Jesus Christ, befriend yourself with people in reality while they're still alive. Then Tabandes were never accepted by big churches as men of God. Never. Because he was not accepted by these big, so called big churches. He decided that, you know, Velapi, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go city to city, but in every town, wherever I come, I'm going to find a nobody, make him a somebody, so that we can use that person as an entrance into that city. And that's what he did. He would go town to town, city to city, appoint a, con a confused brother, then... Help him register his ministry. Then he will say to him from today for what you are my entrance in this city. And he would shoot that person to the top. When he was invited in some of the, of the conferences in Soweto. Big giants would support one another every evening. When the other giant is preaching, but the night when PV is preaching, only Tsukudu will attend. Because they were not appreciating his calling. They did not believe he's a man of God. Peter Harper, how will it be? We can take a samobu or table. What it takes to be you, or table who made you to be you. How to keep out saying the go to sa to break the ground or slice a saw and stand for what you were born or created for. That's what this man did. Wile ayema jualo, ayema liruna, amata liruna, abitwa mushanyana. Now, es kosenik autumti, auti umtu hinkwe hinkwe hinkamba. But una bitwa the thing, Bishop. Now, the so-called big shots accepted him because Bishop didn't Go up in ministry. But he grew up. Had he go up, he would descend. In difficult and tough times. Like this tree. This tree didn't go up, but it grew up. No matter where Salah in Sefate was no Munyela, no Nyamela. Because Asia Nyolua, Suhudi. This man is a tough man. He would be insulted by a so-called anointed man of God, Maru Husani. I forgive him. Maru Motswarela Haka, Kilomo Fakului, Kilomo Fakaraveni. Honale Remuti, we be in a Mopatala. Aritole, we get up by Kake, Tiaba to Bashwile. Now, 
yengwe o batho ba sabuing ka yona it's his weak moments nda den tle bento blandarile ha holo we know his victories but very few know his weaknesses and his blunders there was a time mo aileng a hata tweba tweba yeu ya se sinya south africa ka ofela le batho ba paholelang kutla as a man of god there was a time when he he blundered and when he blundered everybody everybody i mean everybody turned his back against the bishop and i was left alone as his brother and i said my brother i will stand with you the only thing we must do now because of blunder really evangelism allow me to start a ministry and call it living word so that half faith gospel evangelism in a faila o baliela living word ha ke faila living word ke baliela faith gospel now thank you jesus because of that many servants of god ran away from him they left him insulted him talk bad about him never invited him there are people even here in Sibukeng who call him a great man of god but when you ask him did you ever invite him they would never invite him to his church why because they thought he was an antichrist they thought he was not a man of god the only time they would invite him that's when they wanted him to come and collect offerings from people there after they will insult him and say he's ripping people off yet he helped them in their ministries i believe the death of this man has come to wake us up that don't despise the small beginnings it doesn't matter how confused that young man is that young sister is don't despise the small beginnings especially if you don't know why this person says i'm called by god the strength of god is not shown from the strong but the strength of god manifest among the weak you've got it paul says his strength is made perfect in my weakness as you see us really want to bend really aggressive as we are we were made to be like this hona le nako eo batho ba tla o sotla ba o sotle o fihle mo re what's lagging tla ke tla ba bontsha le nna i will stand for what i was called for today ntle bende a monyani o gona hore ha tshiri conference ya tlatse stadium ka le bakala thuto ya ntlebende a moholo ene ke ya le boa e bo hloka etse because e tlo fela ntle hore le ne limpi se ntlebende a monyane ya o ntlebende ntlebende phele lap there are those who cannot pride who cannot take pride ya hore we contributed in the life of Ntebende including people who were imitating because we wanted to be like them that mm-hmm. Ntebende o re rutile ntate gore ha motho a wa ha se pheletso ke thuto ho batlanka morahao we saw him falling we didn't fall with him we kneeled beside him and we prayed for him because we wanted to see how he will rise today i know it doesn't matter ke khupwe ke ing i will rise why because i walked with a man who was powerful and a man who was weak at the same time and we learned how to stand strong and we learned how to rise when we have fallen and we have learned how to be transparent 
One man stood here and he said that man fought against the gates and against the demons. That is true. Against the gates, which is the religious sector. He stood, he was fought by the gates of hell. People who says they know God. But they were used by the devil against him. But this man would not lose faith. He stood the test of times. He said to me the other day in Japan, what you come, Velapi, because some pizza Velapi, and a bit so like an entire, we tell how can a story say Velapi. Listen, Elijah. Listen, Elijah. Listen, Elijah. Had you know who the Elisha El Omutibelan? Utro Sala Libutum of a how? Unukiku Mutibela. Had you know how cut out Samaya? How to be so Elisha? Unso Toti, Mayawa Elia, Unukiku Tibela, scatter Nasila Samana, sentencing si Patra in the ministry. Help me, Jesus. Ronare re le swi mabiso ke le khoa le le swi. Mhm. O re ndatwa ka bishop wa hla le khoa le dela re o Pietres ka mora hae wa hla ngwanana ka phoso na ka tlahlaha ka mora ngwanana iyo. Are we now Simon? Are re la le bitso la motho a le mong. Le ntshwagelo re e be ke bua jena because I grew up fighting for my brother. And one of the reasons I got born again, it is, it's not because I loved Jesus. Mare, in the Lord, the whole time I am saying, I love Rera, Kabo 1979-81, Nekia Fera Kilomogata, or Baska Mord. Kill it. If you tell like 84, I'm going to tell you what I'm I'm very protective. I'm going to tell Bishop Ntlebende. Le ha se a robetse ke baulella batho bankang le bitso la haye ba ipua hantle batho ka lona ba tseba hantle dinthone di se hantle ko pa o kwala ke na taba tseng ngata le mpitsa ke hlabeile ha le nkemele ke fole ke tla bua ntse ke tsona lang o di bua So Moruti Wile Aikena Efan Kreding Evangelism because Kerek is a Nangarwari Kala de Disa Emi, Huna Hulabona Lahore, Patubamu Guahampe Ibe Kereke Akwalo, because Bazarani Badumera Habu Nalo, how Guahampe Kamruti. And he came to Sibokeng, preached the gospel. The first time I preached in Sibokeng, in the Patalata Nikitolekela Kintate, Lubusa. I still remember the message, the borrowed anointing. Bishop Manabesu, Din Totsena, Seo Adian Semodimale Fatsi. Diri rutata ba ya hore, hare sompaning le hamoto asna leto. Hare sompaning le hamoto asna leto. Ska emela moto anyolo ele levele nya haupele. Remember what you were called for. You were called for a pool pit. To pull those that are down to your level, even beyond and above your level. Three years ago, he was diagnosed with fatigue, and doctors told him he must rest. Pastor, uh, Dr. Masuku told him he must rest and uh, 
he must have a long rest. But he refused because with the PV in Tlebende, even resting for two days, it's too long. Because that man had passion for souls, passion for God. And one other thing he had passion for, he had passion for prosperity. Last year, he was again diagnosed with fatigue. Still, the doctor told him, now a different doctor told him, you must rest. And he told me that, Velapi, I'm very tired. I really don't know. I'm very, very tired. I said, no, you must rest. But he said, I can't rest because my time is short. So he decided to call all the pastors just to tell them, to tell them his vision. Probably some of those pastors understood him, but some did not understand him. I'm told in that gathering, one of the words he said, he said to pastors, we must work very hard before next year, 2021 June. Because 2021 June, all pastors in South Africa or in this organization must gather in Caltonville. And it's June now. We're gathering in Caltonville because he's left. Three weeks ago, he called me and he said to me, Vela Pimuna, I'm tired. We need to talk. I said, let's talk. Then we talked about ministry, the future of the Faith Gospel Church, the future of the living way of life, the future of our families. Then we planned everything together telephonically. Then last week, Saturday, I called him because we were, we were talking every day. Not in, I'm not saying almost every day. Every day, three times or five times a day, we would talk with my brother. So I, I spoke with him on Saturday. It was around about two o'clock. And I said to him, Man, are you okay? He said, yes, I'm okay, but I'm still tired. I said, no, let me come so that I may assist you on Sunday. He said, no, call me around about 8 o'clock. Tonight, I will tell you if I still feel the same, then you'll have to come. But if I'm okay, then I'll do the work tomorrow. I said, okay. 8 o'clock, I called him. The phone was off. 11 o'clock, phone was off. 3 o'clock in the morning, the phone was off. Eight o'clock, the phone was off. Then I knew maybe he's decided to meet with the saints. So they told me he went to church on Sunday. He stopped outside. And he waited there for about an hour. And after an hour, he walked in. And he asked them to give him a chair. And he sat on that chair. And he began to talk to the church. He didn't preach. He told them, witchcraft has invaded the church. And we must pray. Now, when he was speaking about the church, he was not referring to his local church. But he was referring to the body of Christ. And he said, we must pray. And he continued to say, actually, let's pray now. And they began to pray. They prayed. And after finishing in that prayer, he said, let's pray again. They prayed, they finished, let's pray again. They prayed, they finished. They say they prayed for over an hour. And then he stood up, he looked at them, and he said, saints, you must accept it is time. And it is God's time. And he stood up. And one man in the church got a hold of him because he was falling. And he walked out. And he cried. And the whole church wept. Only to find that it was for the last time they saw him.
on Monday, I called him. He said to me, it's fine. I asked him, should I come over? He said, no, don't come. You have prayed. I trust you. I trust your prayers. Then, Friday morning, around about 2 o'clock, his firstborn called me, not Sikelelo. Rangwani, pray for Papa. I prayed for him. And he slept. Around about 3 o'clock, he woke up and shouted the name, Kuobas, Kuobas. And that's Kuobas van Rensberg. What? Van Rensberg. Kuobas van Rensberg. Those who know Kuobas van Rensberg, he, I think he died 2016. And he was a great man of God. It's like he was in a transition. He was already seeing on the other side. And on Sikelelo said, no, Kuobas is not there. Tell Kuobas to go. Don't go to Kuobas. Tell Kuobas to go. And he said to Nancy Kelelo, you must pray. And he kept on calling, Kuobas, Kuobas, as if he's seeing him. Then thereafter, he gave up. He died. Went home. He took him to the hospital. When he got there, doctor said, we cannot admit him because he already, he's already gone. So this is how he left. But what breaks my heart, what is happening with him is exactly what happened with Tsukudu. Tsukudu came to us. He sat with me and my brother for four hours telling us painful things. His colleagues in the gospel danced to him. And he said, if God does not take me, I'm going to kill myself. And he even mentioned names. Saints, let's stop being hypocrites. Let's love one another. Let's treat one another like God's servants. Uncle Blella Tsukudui saying, because he told us. But thank you for this time. I said what I want, I said what the Lord wanted me to say. If the Lord didn't want me to say this, I've said it. I will answer when I come before him. But what breaks my heart is Bishop never had peace amongst the saints. And that is not right.